Tonight is Tuesday of Holy Week, and on this night, the passage from the Old Testament that we will hear again comes from the prophet Isaiah. It is the 49th chapter, and in this passage, we will hear another image about the suffering servant. This is scripture that would have been very familiar to Jesus. In fact, he would have known all of the prophets and what they had proclaimed to Israel. And so I imagine that what is shared in this Old Testament was in the backbone of who Jesus was, propelling him into his ministry. From the New Testament, we will hear from the Gospel of John. It's the 13th chapter, and in this passage, it is the last night of Jesus' life, and the disciples are gathered around the table. In that moment, Jesus takes off his outer robe and begins to wash the feet of the disciples gathered. We hear some protest, especially from Peter, and then we hear Jesus respond. And so after we hear the New Testament reading, we will then be introduced to Simon Peter, where he then will tell his own story of what it was like to have his feet washed by Jesus. So I invite you to prepare yourself to hear the word of the Lord, to get yourself comfortable, allow your spirit to be open, your soul, your very being, to hear what God is saying to you on this night. Our scripture is from Isaiah 49. First to the seventh verse. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. The Lord made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him? For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you shall be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers, kings shall be, see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you.
I'm reading from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 15. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. He continually baffled me. My whole life with him, one surprise after another. Jesus turned my world upside down especially when it came to relationships. We would worry about who his right-hand man was, and he always turned it around with last shall be first stories. I wanted to know where I stood with him. I needed for him to be my Lord, my master, my teacher, and he was. But then he went and did this that night. Now, none of us were really high lineage, and we weren't slaves or servants. I mean, the mill that night, there were people to wait on us. This is service that just comes with any good room rented for a mill. But I had planned to wash his feet that night. I was overwhelmed with love for him and fear for his life. I had this nagging need to show him, demonstrate to him that I would do anything for him. But before I could even begin, he knelt before me. He insisted on washing my feet. I was horrified. One more time, he reversed the way I thought about things and how they would go. He just kept doing that. He said to me, you can't be part of the family of God, the kingdom of God, Peter, if you don't let me do this as if I couldn't see that he really meant what he said about serving our neighbors, our friends, and our families. <laughs> he always kept me off balance. I thought I knew what he meant, and then it seemed like I just wasn't getting it. I had to surrender all my preconceived ideas about how relationships are, how they go, who we loved. I had to surrender and let his loving act of washing my feet heal my soul and heal every disappointing relationship I'd ever had.
servant today. Jesus showed his love for one another while he was gathered around the table. His act of servanthood was difficult for his disciples to bear. But it is the message that Jesus leaves with us on this night. To love one another. To be the servant of each other. And so I invite you to think about what it is that you can do this week. In what ways can you show your servant heart for your fellow brothers and sisters? Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you that you take the ordinary and show us the extraordinary love through Jesus Christ. And as he knelt and washed the feet of his brothers, may we too kneel and bow before you so that we may serve our brothers and sisters, that we may do the hard work of loving our enemies, that we may do what you are calling to love our neighbors as ourselves. Grant us humility, grant us courage. In Jesus' name, amen.